Hey everybody, this is Steve Moore, owner of Run More, this fabulous brick and mortar running shop located in Westminster, Maryland. I wanted to share a couple tips on just sort of getting into a, a good running routine. It's a common question I get here or people that come in here with their own plans and they share it with me and sometimes they're great. A lot of times they're not. And I just wanted to share some things that I've seen or stuff that's worked for me over my 30 plus years of running, whether it's coming back off an injury or just helping people as we're coaching them into their own successful running career. I think one of the first mistakes that people make when they get into running is they just want to get into it with both feet. And I totally understand that. It's pretty common when you find a new hobby, whether it's baking or football or knitting or whatever it may be, where you just, you're all in. You're watching the YouTube channels. You're studying the form. You're, you're looking at all the great shoes out there and you want to just dive into this. Running is not really one of those things that you can really dive into with both feet right away and find long-term success with it. When I tell people how I suggest them starting, they usually give me the, the stink eye of like, mm, I, can, I got this old man. What I usually suggest for people when they're getting into it is that first week, three days a week, 20 minutes at a time, that's it. A lot of people will come in here and they'll say, you know, I'm going to start a streak. It's January we're on and I'm going to go 30 days in a row. I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. No, it doesn't quite work that way. Give yourself time to get into a routine. And by doing that, you kind of want to under train to start. So really that first week, we talk about doing 20 minutes of run walk. If you're going out there for your 20 minutes and you can't hold a conversation with the person next to you, whether it's somebody actually there or an imaginary person with you, you need to stop and walk. You just kind of get yourself and your body back into that type of motion. It's something that's probably new for you, unique to you. And you got to give yourself a chance to get into that rhythm. And if you're huffing and puffing right away, you're going too much energy, your heart rate's spiking up there, you're in oxygen debt right away, you need to slow it down and get into a little walking thing so that you can get yourself calmed down and then go for another run. And you can do that for 20 minutes, three days a week very easily. It's, it's actually one of the reasons why I like starting people to start on the track because it's flat, it's even. If you're having that bad day, you're never too far away from your car if you have to stop. And also as you progress, you might be able to see like, hey, you know what, a week ago, I could only do a half a lap before I had to start walking. Now I can do three quarters of a lap. I can do 300 meters before I have to start walking. It gives you a nice measurable notice of change as you're developing your own, your own running routine there. So I usually will say like week, week one, week two, week three, three days a week, four days a week, three days a week, you know, just sort of getting yourself comfortable with being out there. And I actually, for myself, I even find if I'm coming off an injury, even though I've been running for so long, it takes me 10 runs before I feel like a runner again. And I sort of follow maybe not that exact 20 minutes plan, but I really will come back with like every other day for a little bit and then two on one day off and start building in some of those days. You got to be easier on yourself when you come out of the gate because it's very easy to get discouraged and stop. And what we see with a lot of people is when they give themselves that I'm going to run every day in January. If you miss January 14th, it's pretty easy to miss January 15th and 16th and 17th. But if you plan for these days off, if you're already saying, I'm not going to go six days in week one or week two or week three, it's a much more manageable and easy thing to set those goals and time away for your, set aside for yourself than saying this is something you have to do every day. And even as you start building your mileage in and such, you can still follow a similar plan. And one of the other things we like to do with our plans is these cut down weeks. So if you are going out there and doing three to four days a week for the first like two, three, four weeks, and you start wanting to, you want to continue that trend, you want to start building up, that's great. But you still need to give yourself a little bit of time. So we have these like small week plans where we only want to do about 20, 20 minutes at a time. And then as we get into building up a little bit, we might only want to do four days a week and maybe we want to do 30 minutes at a time. So what we'll do is we'll say week three, we're doing 10 miles for that week. We're doing four runs that week. And week five, maybe we're going to do four runs and 12 miles. Well, then we come back in week six, I might only do nine miles. We want to go week, week up and then have a check down week where you bring yourself a chance to take down one day a week. Maybe you're only doing two or three days that week. And you go back to those 20 minute runs. You're giving your body a chance to sort of process all that hard work you're doing, and that'll give you a chance to see development. Because if you think that you can just keep building week after week after week, I hate to tell you, it's just not going to work that way. So by doing sort of a two week up, one week down is a nice way to slowly build yourself up. You can build, 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 build. And you start adding all those elements in and before you know it, you're running and you're doing, you know, a nice 30 miles a week of training, but it's going to take you a while to get there. Don't expect to come out of the gates and be running that long. Be easy on yourself. Give yourself a little bit of grace. Give yourself some time to get into running without being all in on running day one. Because I think you're going to set yourself up for failure that way. And I think the real goal when I talk to people in here getting running is like, 
I'm so happy you're coming here getting a shoe, but I want to see you in 20 years getting more shoes. I want to see that you found the sport and that's something that you were all into for life and not just for that little short-term gain or that small weight loss plan that you have, but you want to be a long-term lifelong runner because I tell you, that's where all the happiness is. When you get out there and you're smiling, you're excited to get out there and run for each day and you feel all that wonderful energy and positivity you're getting from the running, it's an amazing feeling, but you won't get to that point if you start trying to hammer day in, day out, right out of the gate on your running program. I hope that was helpful for you. And if you have any questions on sort of a beginner running program, please feel free to leave it down below. We'll try to get back to as soon as we can. And if you found this helpful or enjoyable, give me a uh, like and subscribe. It will certainly help me out there. Thank you so much for watching our channel and I hope to see you around soon.